Hey Vern, what is that P mode on our camera dial for? What do we use that for? Let's find out. Click 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 and a pick it. Click 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 and a pick it. Click 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 and a pick it. Click click click. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Vern Danke, the click and pick it guy. So today's lesson is about the P mode on our camera dial. Now our camera has what's called a full manual mode where you get to choose all the settings or it has a fully automatic mode where all you do is aim, focus, and click. Okay, now the fully automatic mode, let's just say that's at the very bottom. Okay, it's the beginning step, your first step. Now, the very next step above that is the P mode and you can consider P mode as the ISO priority mode. Everything else in your camera can be uh, fully automatic, but you control the ISO. You control how much light is hitting that sensor, okay? And the camera will control the rest. Okay, so if you look here, we've got our camera in the P mode already. And holding the trigger, it's showing that it wants a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second. 3.5 is what it's choosing for our aperture and it's showing us an, an ISO of 800. Now let's go in here and let's let's see what ISO does alright we're in auto there and it was choosing 800 now let's go into the settings and let's go over each one let's see what they recommend for each ISO setting so a, a setting of 100 it says under clear skies and for bright scenes an ISO of 200, it says the same thing. And under 400, it says under cloudy skies and for bright indoor scenes. An 800 ISO in the early evening and for dimly lit scenes. Let's go to 1600. Dark indoor scenes and outdoor scenes at night. 3200. Keeps images stable, less camera shake and dark scenes, 6400, which is the normal usable limit, keeps images stable, less camera shake and dark scenes, and then also 12,800, really high. Uh, and it says during movie shooting, ISO speed will switch to ISO 6400. So 6400 is usually the normal workable limit at the top end. So normally we use 100 up to 6400. That's usually the normal usable limit. All right. So let's go here, let's go to 100. Let's see, well, we gotta switch it this way, okay. So let's switch it down to 100. Okay, now we're gonna take a picture of monkey. All right, so we're gonna focus and take the shot. So you can hear the shutter speed is really slow. Uh, it looks okay, but I'd like a little faster shutter speed if I could get it. Um, now here's the thing, in low light, you want as clean of an image as possible so sometimes you have to slow down the shutter speed to be able to get a really clean image but usually an ISO indoors of a hundred is is pushing it without a tripod alright so let's try ISO 200 and let's see what that gets us so let's go back here I hate it when it turns off but it does okay so we'll go here Whoops. And we'll select 200 and, and it'll double the light when you go up one full stop like this okay anytime it doubles we consider it a full stop okay and it probably doubled the shutter speed on that and you can hear it's getting better and better now here's the thing when you're choosing the ISO and you're taking an action shot if it's coming out blurry your ISO is too low. You need to raise the ISO to where the shot looks clean and where it looks like it's in focus. And that's up to you. Um, the benefit of maybe using a lower ISO would be that you want less noise in your images and to, the, to you that's really important. Um, maybe you want to run at 200, maybe you want to run at 100. But this is your workable your workable range from 100 normally up to 1600 this is pretty extreme 12,800 you'd probably never use that um, 
you might go a little higher in 6400 but probably not very often all right so there you have it p mode is a very simple easy mode to use and if you're new to photography um, it's a good first step up okay um, it gives you an idea of what ISO is all about and how to get a clean image um, it also helps you to understand how ISO affects the shutter speed because if your ISO is too low um, your your shutter speed won't be fast enough and the object that you're trying to capture won't be in focus so then you just raise your ISO until things balance out but there's a point where you reach the usable limit of your lens or of the available light okay so this is this is a good thing to use with no flash to learn the limits of your camera and the limits of your lens all right so if I've helped you at all why don't you throw me a like if you can and please consider subscribing if you haven't and thank you for subscribing if you already have all right and so let's grow together